Hello, good morning, and a happy Monday to you all. Hopefully you had a good weekend. Uh, I am looking forward to, uh, back to getting back to uh, platform dev. Esitsu, hello. Um, so yeah, uh, over the weekend yesterday, I was able to work a little bit more on this project. Uh, so I have a sign up uh, and I have a login buttons and they're all working and doing the sort of things that you expect. I updated our automated tests to sort of work with both of those. Um, although there's really not much more you need to do with login. Um, I also set up uh, tests in, uh, in production. So uh, what happens right now and can go ahead and open this up, sort of take a look at this. Um, oh, I, I have, I don't have this. Um, let me, let me add this to the workspace. To, uh, add folder workspace. Oh, it's like a hidden folder, isn't it? Uh, can I find? No? Okay, fine. Um, there is, let me see, well, you know what? we can do it with an average one of you. Uh, let's see, we, if we open up workflows, let's make this a little bit bigger. Um, for the platform web workflow, Uh, I added this post deploy smoke test. So uh, my idea here is, and I, I double checked all my Cypress tests. So none of them uh, do anything bad yet that I wouldn't want, that, I, that I'm not okay running on production. Now that might one day change if I'm doing something sort of like destructive as part of my tests. Uh, but um, until then, uh, when I merge into uh, the main branch, uh, it does it does end-to-end -end tests here, it lints, it checks everything, it does a full deploy. Um, and then after the deploy, it runs Cypress tests again to the production version. So that should also verify that everything was deployed correctly, that the cache was busted. And, uh, and that everything is working. And I should get a uh, notification in case it doesn't work. So that's what I did yesterday. Uh, today, and I was looking through my uh, sort of list of uh, things to do here. Um, uh, Want to set up logging out, a kind of an important thing. Um, uh, Signing up via YouTube and Twitch.tv accounts. I was looking into that a little bit. I need like dev keys and other stuff. So this might have to be off stream task to work on. Uh, I'll have to, um, I'll potentially have to like bag grab something else out today if we get this done in time. So let's go ahead and drag this in and uh, see what we're gonna do. So basically, um, for logging out, uh, it should be fairly simple. Let's open up our Cypress tests here. Um, uh, when we're logged in, we should see a um, we should see a, a logout link, and if we click that, it should. Um, well, I guess we should just see a logged out a logout link. So I'm actually gonna put this as part of this, uh, this test here. So when we're logged in, we have a welcome message and we should also have data test. Um, probably just log out. This will fail because I don't have a logout 
um, button or link here. So let's go ahead and get that added in. Um, okay, so when I'm logged in, I have this is authenticated link here. So if this is true, uh, here you are with this welcome. So I'm gonna want another li with a log out link. So li. And I want this to be a link. So I'm not gonna put the data test here. Um, now, can I control what this is? Well, to begin with, let's we'll start with this. Oh, well, that gives me a logout link. That's not looking that great. Uh, what am I missing here? I have, uh, for this li, we have the nav item, nav bar text. Oh, or you maybe not nav bar text. There we go. That looks a lot nicer. Okay, so for logout, uh, in the authentication API, uh, there is logout here. We're gonna do a get request to something like this. Um, with a return to our logout URL, which is probably just gonna be the the home directory, which is gonna be nice and easy. So I want this, this URL, which should be fairly simple. Inside of here, we're going to create a logout URL. Okay, so your domain. I have this already. Let's see, v2 logout, client ID is your client ID. Um, Yep, I have a client ID. Return to our logout URL. So I'm thinking our logout URL is going to be our base URL. Um, and that's it. Just, just the base URL. Uh, I can use an environment variable for this. Uh, or I can use something else. I'm thinking probably an environment variable for this, just in case I want to control this and be different later.
All right, so I'll call this the auth zero logout redirect environment variable. Uh, you don't exist yet. I need to add that over here. So in this case, locally, we're going to go to HTTP local host 8080. Um, okay, so that will make you happy here. I don't need this for, I don't think I need this for web, but I do need to add this into our, um, uh, platform web here. So when we lint, um, it needs to have uh, these logout, like what we're, what we're going to here. So this is going to be our auth zero login redirect. I want you to be um, So when I lint, it's localhost. When I do end-to-end -end testing, it's also going to be localhost. When I do oh yeah, it's set up in both here. Uh, let's see, that's the same thing. Okay, for deployment. Um, this is going to be CS. Um, I actually probably want to put this as a secret. So let me add that really quickly here. So I can use GitHub. So GitHub uh, secret set. The name of the secret, which is this, uh, for actions, it asks for what that's going to be. Just so I can paste in correctly, this is going to be HTTPS. Okay, so uh, to use this, start you uh, don't need environment variables there. Okay, and then post deploy smoke test, uh, and this is fine too. No, none of that should change. Okay, so that makes you happy here. Back to auth, uh, for, no, back to navbar. For your href, I want you to call that function. So we're gonna do um, Ooh, you don't wanna give me
There it is, create logout URI. That gives me the string and now I can use this logout URI down here. Okay, so that will log me out and redirect me back to um, our, our page. Um, and then finally, I have to add into auth0 to tell it those two redirect uh, URIs. So log out URLs. Um, okay, so this is gonna be Local is 8080 and uh, yes. Okay. So that should be enough to allow me to log out now. Okay, so here I am with this. I hit log out and doesn't quite work if I hit refresh now yeah I'm still well it's interesting so logout still showing well that's not good um, all right what happened if I try to well I can't even try to log in anymore uh, when I hit refresh It starts up with a, oh, right, the loading thing. Because I have, I have this use effect once, we grab the auth token from our cookie I guess when we do log out, I need to also delete our cookie for the auth token. I don't need that log anymore. Yeah, I need to delete the cookie for auth token. I should probably also delete the state. Although I don't think that really matters that much because that cookie expires after 60 seconds. So I, I think I really just need to delete, delete this, which does mean, uh, unfortunately, um, if I hover over this, okay, I do see the URL down in the bottom left, unlike with the, the login one, which is unfortunate. I need I need a call back. I am going to need to move Actually, I'm gonna to need to do this in a block here so I can get the state, so I can create a dispatch in here.
All right, so we prevent the default, and then I need to, um, let's see, I don't need to create the state. I don't need to create the login URI. Um, although it might be it might be good. Maybe, maybe here is where I should do that. I have the login URI there so you can see where it's going. But I don't really know if that, that matters. I just create the log out URI here. And you're going to go to hash, just like the other ones. Um, OK, I want to delete the cookie. Do I have a delete cookie? Uh, remove cookie. I don't have one. I think I want to create one. And I know that uh, I know that a delete cookie is really just a set cookie to like a nothing value, but I think it'll be easier. Is that? Let me remember how to actually delete the cookie. As browser extensions again, that's not what I want. So web APIs cookie store, cookie store delete. Okay, the delete method expires the cookie by changing the date to one in the past. So that's that's how it works. So we could just do the same thing and takes in a URL, a path, I don't think I need a cookie store. Apparently you're not available on Firefox anyways, or Safari. Well, never mind, not not this one. Do you not still have the set cookie from before that you used to delete it? Yeah, so I think I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use this set cookie. Uh, but I kind of like the idea of creating a delete cookie that just uses this behind the scenes and sets it. So I don't have to ever remember this again. So if I do, um, delete cookie. So we would take in a key. Um, I don't need the value. I need a path. And I need, I don't need a TTL. So I just need those two things. And what am I gonna do? Uh, so I need to get document. Um, actually, you know what? I don't even need to get the document. We're gonna set this, aren't we? So we're gonna call set cookie. Uh, pass in the key, the value is going to be an empty string. Um, path is going to be whatever the path is. And TTL, we're going to set to be zero. There. That should, that should do it. Okay, so delete cookie. Um, our key is going to be Auth0 token, I believe. And our path is slash.
Um, okay, so I delete the cookie, then I want to navigate us out there. So we're gonna do the same thing. So if that error. Um, okay, so it's gonna be this log out URI. Um, auth store dispatch. Uh, what's in my auth store? Right, I have this is authenticated. I have um, my user error and my token. So I need to set these to false, but I'm actually navigating elsewhere, which is gonna recreate the store when it comes back. So I actually don't know if I need the store. I don't think I do. I don't think I need you. So I don't need you or you. Okay, so now if I click log out. Hey, there we go, okay. So let's log in again. Um, I am fully logged out, so that is that is excellent. Uh, and I can log in again and we're good to go. Okay, and the test is really just making sure that the logout button works. Uh, this is sort of a manual test we have to do, uh, unfortunately, but um, so far that's working and I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Let us, you know, I didn't even create a new branch for this. Let's, let's do that really quickly. This is what? Number 20. So, um, uh, uh, branch is going to be um, logging out. Um, okay. Let's get. Uh, okay, so our commit for this is uh, we're handling so handling logouts If there's no GitHub actions that run off of that, that tells me that I screwed up and broke the GitHub um, 
uh, broke the GitHub Actions um, template or or document something. So I need to I need to go figure that out. See, this is in handling log out. It's in Brooks builds. I pushed handling log out. I'm in Brooks builds. I sh oh, there. Okay. That just took a while for it to uh, recognize that I pushed it and spin up, uh, spin it up. Usually it's pretty fast, like within seconds of uh, pushing that it at least acknowledges that the job needs to be run, even if a handler doesn't pick it up yet. So this one, because it's just a, pu a push to another branch, all it's going to do is run the lint. On pull request, it runs the lint and the end-to-end -end tests. And then on merge, it runs the lint, the end-to-end -end tests, the deploy, um, and the, the post-deploy smoke test. So while this is happening, Take a look at, uh, okay, so click the logout button. We're no longer seeing the welcome, welcome message. Uh, we see the create account login links. So we're done with this. Uh, we are now in the middle of deploying that. So when that's done and deployed, we can move it to done. Uh, the social login accounts, I can't really do that on stream very, like it's not gonna be fun for you. It's just gonna be watching me working on a different monitor that you can't see as like I create dev accounts and like grab keys and all that stuff. Um, this one might be good. As a viewer, I want to see what courses I could take. So looking at our um, sort of design here, this is, we want a button with our courses and then we're gonna want a list of uh, full courses that I have. So these wouldn't be the live stream VODs or anything else, it would just be the, the full courses. Which probably means I need some kind of uh, backend to request from to give me the courses. That kind of make that makes sense. Right, because I need to store what those courses are too. Uh, so the back ends again need to connect to our Postgres database to store off like courses. Um, I suppose that I could make it more stateless and then use tags and other stuff with, with YouTube. Uh, so that I could just like query YouTube for it and then like, hey, YouTube has this thing, there's those courses. But I don't know if I really like that idea. Um, so I'm gonna pretend that we have a back end set up for this uh, and we're going to create this all in the front end and um, sort of mock our, uh, our responses. So that way we can sort of know what the data structure we wanna get before we finish it out. So. Uh, this looks like it's going to be the next good thing for us to do. All right, so you you ran successfully, which means I should be able to uh, a pull request you now. So uh, this um, 
resolves number what are you resolves number 20 uh we are able to log out now Yeah, so this one, that happened right away. So this time now we can see it's gonna run the end then tests. Uh, this takes quite a while to do. So uh, I do have it, um, when it builds the web app, I have it building in release mode because I want it to test in the way that it's, uh, it's gonna be deployed before it's deployed. So that obviously is a fairly long um, compile and then uh, it has to do that again for um, deployment. There might be a way to cache the built um, the built files and then share those between the jobs. That would be interesting. I might want to look into that sometime. But okay, so if you're doing that, and we're just gonna wait until this happens, so I'm gonna go ahead and quit out of this. What is the chance I'm going to give myself a uh, merge conflict uh, by by working on this? Um, it's like you know, there's a chance. Hope, hopefully, not not a big one. If if there is a, a merge conflict, like actually waiting for for it to finish would be the appropriate thing to do. It just takes. See how long has it been taking? Um, this one took 20 minutes. This one took nine minutes. And then 18 minutes, 16 minutes. So it's it's been taking, like it normally takes around 10 minutes or so, but for some reason, sometimes takes 20 minutes, which is, I don't, I don't exactly know what's going on there. I think it might be, um, get up so now, you know, Maybe we should, before just starting on something else, uh, GitHub Actions, I want to cache, like I want to cache a folder between, um, between jobs. So it'd be dependencies, yes, but, and also shared data. Oh, artifacts. Okay, so there's this um, GitHub Actions called Actions Cache. We can use it to upload cache and then download it in different jobs. Okay, so cache node modules, actions cache, cache name, cache node modules with, okay, and then we give it a path. Now, artifacts, we have upload and download. Okay, upload artifact.
Okay, caching is used to reuse data files between jobs or workflows while artifacts are used to save files after a workflow has ended. So in this case, I don't really need artifacts. I just need a cache. So my idea would be, uh, let's see. So on my push, I don't really need anything special. That's a lint. Um, I only have one One thing that I'm doing here, uh, I'm doing a a cargo check and a cargo format check, which is not doing a full recompile. This does do a, a compile though. End to end tests uh, requires our lint. Deploy require so the build the build step I think is the one that takes the most time, which would be this build the web app. So I want to cache this for release here. If I do that, I could then use a web server to start that up without having to do another like a trunk. Not test. That that would be fine. Although the npm install that could be that could be nice too. I only do that once. Technically, I do that a second time with the the post deploy smoke test. All right. So let's try this. Let's create a new a new item here. Um, this will be build um, build web app. So needs um, there's no reason to do this unless lint has been done. So it needs lint. Um, this also is going to be if if it's a pull request. Yeah, so I don't want to run on every single thing. I want it to run on I want it to run on pull request or if we're on main. Pretty much this. Okay, so I need I need to check out. Um, okay, so I do need to touch this to create that dot env file so it doesn't yell at me. Uh, the um, sort of like the load dot env absolutely needs um, nope absolutely needs this .env file in there. Okay. I don't need to do another cargo check. I do need to add these targets, cargo install trunk, yeah, this is all this is all stuff that will be a lot faster because I do this once. So here. Build the web app. 
I do this here. We're building for a release. Uh, Yeah, and then here I'm having to CD into it, create a .env, and then run trunk serve. Uh, when I don't want to run trunk serve anymore, I'm going to want to run something else to start a, uh, a server, which I think I can use something Rust, or I can use Python or PHP. Anything will work as long as it's on the right port. So after this is done, I want to now cache Okay, so it looks like from main branch, uh, V3 is now available. Okay, so uh, we're going to cache um, cached dist. Um, ID. So this is going to be um, platform dist. Uses cache v3 with. Okay, so path is. Um, I guess this can be platform web dist key. A cache key can include any of the context functions, literals, and operators supported by GitHub Actions. For example, using the hash files function, you can as you create a new cache when dependencies change. Oh, so this is letting us know how to bust the cache. You can use an arbitrary command output in the cache key, such as a date or a software version. If the provided key doesn't match an existing cache, a new cache is automatically created if the job completes successfully. So that's runner.os. Wonder what that is. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a Rust example, but that's for crates, uh, cargo. Oh, it takes me to the top of it. That's great. Which is. Cache, so runner to RS, cargo hash files with the cargo dot lock.
guess hash files could be interesting to use that. Uh, all right, so um, I need to know what to set the key is. This is runner.os, which I don't know exactly what that, what the runner operating system version number maybe. Uh, I have going into dist here, these files. I could use, I could, um, this is dynamic names. Um, index changes very rarely. Is that true? Um, Caleb Dev, uh, welcome, 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 Caleb, um, and uh, and Raiders. Uh, how are you all? Um, uh, oh, that's that's hilarious. There, there looks like there's a little bug in the uh, the chat. Uh, it um, it just said true, so the true viewers are here. Um, hello, and uh, how are you doing today? How's your stream? I know you have you have true viewers. I, I don't have true viewers. Uh, or at least I do now, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, how was your stream? What are you working on today? Um, it was all right. It took you forever to get things done. You made an SDL window with Perlin noise in six hours. Um, well, that actually sounds pretty fun. Perlin noise, like all the random algorithms are kind of interesting uh, and, and fun to do. Although I've never, did you make the Perlin noise algorithm yourself or were you using like an existing library for that? Cause like it's, it's always this like sort of fun, like sort of curve. Um, and then you sort of like do time-based um, uh, noise generation, which is which is always very interesting. Um, okay, you adapted a JS version into OCaml. Oh, interesting, interesting. Okay, that sounds fun. So were you making just sort of like a, um, uh, Normally you can make like static, although it wouldn't it wouldn't be like static. It would be like foggy static, uh, where it has like interesting patterns in it, or you can have just like uh, lines that are just sort of like moving up and down. Um, what was the display like? Just regular cal cloudy noise. Okay, so you're making like a fog slash clouds. That's cool. That, that's fun. I want to get back into like that sort of creative dev I, again after couple more projects then I'm then I think we might be able to do something like that um, so what uh, we just did was a majority of the stream we were working on um, log out uh, we've got that working so now uh, um, well I thought we had that working and now now this is showing up Uh, I guess, hold on, why, why are you showing up? So you're, you're a lot, okay, so apparently I have a bug and we can't, we can't do this yet. Never, never mind. You've been having issues with the OCaml build system and such, couldn't find solutions. You love the language, but the project handling sucks one of the problems about like the not super 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 popular languages is that the the fall off between build tools and like dev tools is so fast it's like okay javascript um like python um i guess like rust is getting up there uh and then it's like all these amazing things and then like just a little bit later it's like nope don't don't really have much good good luck which kind of sucks um, all right, so we need to figure out this bug. So 
Not that. I want... And save you. Oh, well, I know why why you're working strangely, is because it we're back into the main branch. That's that's why. Um, okay, I want to. I wanna. I've got it. So. Let's get stash. Let's get check out. Uh, what was it? It's um, handling logout. There we go. Now, now I have it. Ninety-nine percent of examples, and even the official guide uses the compiler directly. They have a build system which they tell you to to install, but don't really tell you how to use. Oh, that's too bad. Having having like a documentation team on like for a compiler that's actually working on that is so important, and it really shows with like with um, uh, JavaScript we have MDN, um, and with um, uh, I guess with uh, things like Rust, there's like the Rust docs. Are, are pretty amazing for, you know, when compared to like some of the other stuff. Also, we have like several books and like sort of an entire like sort of library of tools to use to create docs, which really helps encourage people to do that. I'm really happy that the community sort of like works on that, that the actual like foundation considers it important. Um, okay, so uh, that was a the false false alarm. That that's working. GitHub and watch. Are you done? You are done. Okay, that that succeeded. That took nine minutes and twenty seven seconds, uh, and this was a pull request. So what I can do is GitHub PR merge that in. Okay, merge complete. Sure, we'll delete this branch when we're done. Um, okay, so what's next? Uh, go ahead and submit that. Um, we're back into main. We've merged stuff in. You also need to build the project for the build system to register new files. Sometimes that doesn't even do it, so it's difficult. Oh no, a unreliable build system is is not good is not good um yeah it's um it's something something that i was remembering a while ago is and i think i think a lot of us have done this is we have a we have a ci cd system it runs uh it runs our tests and then the auto deploys and then you commit code and it fails and so you push it again you just like do a a, a white space change you push that and it fails again, and you're like, okay, well, then you push it again, another white space change, push that, and then it succeeds, and you're like, yay, it worked. Third time's the try, and then you walk away when it's like, oh, oh, um, yeah, we have problems. We should not, we should, a red test should not be like a, oh, let's just try it again. Um, okay, so GitHub run watch. This is the one that takes potentially a long period of time. And this is what we were thinking about caching. So we would want to uh, let's see in here. Yeah, look, it takes a long time to install trunk, build the web app. Install Cypress is like that its own thing too. So if I wanted to, let's open up another one of these. Conflict, uh oh. Well, 
I created a conflict. Okay, so what what did I do here? Uh, let's accept the. The current change was updating these environment variables with the log auth logout redirect. Oh, because I'm adding this build. Okay, so if I just accept the current change only. So all the current changes, so I don't worry about that. That should still be happy because we have these auth logout redirects. Okay, so you you should be good. Fixed, merge, config, conflict, because I'm um, impatient. You don't know what to do because you like the language. Literally everything you've done, there's been an issue blocking you or putting you into a situation where you need to solve issues before continuing. So if it was a like a business thing, the answer is pretty pretty easy, right? Like if if this is something where you have a runway and you don't have time to like solve all these things, like you, you've already answered your you've already answered the only question, you know you know what the answer is. But if it's a fun project, that's a little bit more difficult to answer. Um, okay, so I want to, before end-to-end -end test, let's go ahead and start adding these in here. So this is going to be um, build web app. And I think what I can do is actually, I'm just going to copy you. Googling issues doesn't return many results either. It just, it just doesn't want me to program in it. Um, I think, you know, it's it's always been a very interesting interesting thing to me when when languages that are popular but not like super popular when they don't have these like the the uh, the community hasn't like really formed around it yet but there's a decent number of people using it uh that's like i think that's like a dangerous like time for for a language because uh it if it just had more of those things it would then attract more people more people across the chasm but uh yeah i don't know like if um, it, it needs it needs people that are working in it that want to work in it to create those, but that means if they create those, they're not working on their own projects. It's a uh, that's that's a rough spot to be in. Haskell is apparently better for community, but its last stable release was 12 years ago, apparently. Yeah, so I haven't I haven't used Haskell or like played around with it at all. I didn't know that it hadn't been updated in that long. That's interesting. But if it works and it doesn't have any bugs or anything else and it just it just it still is able to do everything and it is it works with all the uh, the libraries, then I suppose it doesn't need to be updated that often. Um, okay, so we're doing this thing, runs on you. Um, we'll have a needs 
Uh, needs for lint. Do I want to have you be a needs for lint? Um, if I don't, so build web app. I want you to have a needs or build web app. OCaml has a very active development, which is probably what annoys you the most. It's been it's being worked on, but you have so many basic issues. Hmm. I can I can see that too. If if like things are changing so actively that like if if the APIs are changing and they're not sort of solidified, that that is rough. That is rough. Especially if you see like new versions and new 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 toys to play with, but then you can't because it breaks everything you've worked on so far. That's that's hard to deal with. Um yeah, it's it's like it's one of the reasons why I still like have trouble with a lot of libraries with Rust recommending for production because so many of them uh, aren't like refuse to to say like, hey, we're a 1.0 release, and that doesn't inspire confidence in using it for any kind of um, production application. I think like one of the reasons I'm willing to do it for production for Brooks builds is because I'm doing courses in it. So when they make major changes, updating that is going to be part of the value proposition that I have. I need to also learn the new thing. So doing, doing that helps me. Uh, if I had an unrelated business, I don't, I don't know if I would be willing to, to use something like you yet. Um, okay, so build a web app, so it runs on you, steps. Okay, so we check out, uh, update Rust, update this target, install trunk, build the web app. So we build for release and working directory platform web with that environment variable. Um, I don't want to do install Cypress or create the secrets file. Okay, so test, that run the test, we don't wanna do that. So these things get deleted. Um, and this is now where I wanna do my caching. So cache examples. Okay, so um, actions cache. Okay, so with path, uh, where do I want to put this? This would be caching all of these things. Um, I specifically for you though, want to build once and then I have end to end tests here and then deploy. Okay, so You have target because you're using the current directory that you're in. Is there...
you're trying to find alternatives because you're interested in these uh, functional programming languages. Yeah, I don't think I've ever used any of the pure functional programming languages before. Um, like Rust has Rust has functional programming abilities, um, but is not like forces you down a purely functional programming path. Uh, JavaScript, for as much people want to complain about it, can do pretty much a, a, like a huge amount of functional programming in it, but again, doesn't force you to do it. It, it ships with every possible foot gun that you want. Um, it, it, it ships with. So, uh, let's see. Python... Again, like there's some functional programming you can do. That's a little bit, I don't remember if it's like easy to do purely functional with everything or not. I often do reach into classes for that. So that's, that's not functional programming at all. But they have Lambda functions. And so I know you can, you can do it. Same with TypeScript for JavaScript. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's yeah. I don't think I've ever tried a uh, purely functional programming language. Just languages that allow you to. Um, okay, so if this is target, then my path is going to be um, platform web slash dist. And my key, I can do runner OS cargo. This is not be cargo. This is gonna be um maybe like platform web hash files. I don't want to look for cargo.lock. I want to look for platform web dist index.html. I wonder if that will work. And so that would be using this cache. Do I have to do I have to use the cache on the other side? Cache numbers. Oh, okay. So I can do I can do this then. Steps at outputs cache hit does not equal true. Run install. Using the cache hit output, subsequent steps such as install or build can be skipped when a cache hit occurs on the key. And how are, how are you doing? You're still, you're still working. Uh, you do like being able to write native code plus having types enforced the machine language, the ML, machine language, languages support those. Wait, is that not true? Um, uh, just a shame there's so many issues in such a short time. Yeah, that. Well, I don't, I don't know. It seems it, the what you're describing sounds to me like um, growing pains type stuff. Like it's going to be solved. It just is not to a state that you want it to be right now. But hopefully, in time, it should get better, right? Um, okay, so this cache is used. Then I need. Okay. 
I'm also running out of time. Okamal is older than you are. I've, I have heard of it. So wait, is it is it growing pains forever? Like it's it's growing old, but it's growing fast, but it's like just not not growing in like stable ways. Because then that sucks. 26 years old. Um, and it was used to make rust. Interesting. Okay. That's that's too bad. That that is. Um, I mean, it still might get better, but if it's one of those things where people who aren't making, who aren't like into documentation, aren't using it, then it's not going to like then the documentation is not going to be created because like documentation has to be created by people it's not like it just magically appears one day uh so that's 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 unfortunate one day maybe though maybe um all right well i realized that uh, my my alarm went off telling me i have to go and uh, get ready for work today uh so looking at what i have here so we're, we're trying to set up caches for this so build the web app we then use the cache path i just want this to be a single thing like that so platform web dist uh with this key and then apparently down here we're gonna have an if statement oh this finished um so that means it finished running and it also um, uh, did a post deploy smoke test. So everything should be running in production now. So I can come here and go to booksbuilds.com. Go to login and we're here and I can log out. And now I'm logged out. Excellent. We're, uh, we are in business, which means I can mark you. Oh, not that one. Oh, this one also automatically got moved over. I'm gonna add an item here. Uh, so before we do this, I'm gonna add an item, which is um, cash, uh, cash where, like, um, like, oh, implement, how about this? Implement a cash in GitHub actions for the longer running um processes uh jobs so this is something that we can work on tomorrow um and we'll hopefully it won't take more than one day to sort of go in we'll, we'll add in probably one maybe two caches in there to sort of uh try to make things a little bit faster so every once in a while it'll be slow most of the time it'll be really fast we could, apparently can get 10 gigabytes worth of caches which doesn't necessarily mean much because uh uh node.js and um and uh rust um sort of like cargo installs can get up there really fast so that might that might be an issue anyways uh i'm gonna take off so i hope that the rest of you have a great rest of your day and uh, I'll see you next time. Uh, bye.